Now, looking forward to this weekend further. England versus New Zealand is obviously the big game. England versus New Zealand at Twickenham is an amazing occasion to be at. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's something different there. It's, it's, it's intimidating, the height of the stands. and The it, amount of people. The amount of people. and Swing low. Yes, yeah, <laughs> swing low, sweet chariot. Uh, England absolutely gave it to Japan. What do we read into that in comparison to where the All Blacks have been going? Oh, I think you could see it in the huddle post the Argentinian game. Owen Farrell brought his um, troops in and he was delivering a hell of a sermon. Um, and and I, I thought, man, they're going to be really hard to beat. And they were just ruthless, um, both sides of the ball. Yeah. And I think their, their preparation for that week was just to the point and it started at full time. Um, you know, they were clearly embarrassed losing to um, Argentina at home. Um, they did something about it. Um, and they're going to need that and then some this this week because uh, you know we know the All Blacks are have probably been targeting this one and um, you know few, few rested bodies will come back into the the frame so um, it's going to be a doozy, mm. including Brodie Retallick. A perfect clash to bring Brodie Retallick back for Bryn. for his hundredth as well. Hundredth, yeah. Oh, it is. You know, you know, definitely with England, the physical side of the game is going to be massive. But I think what I like enjoyed about England on the weekend was the way that they scored their tries, especially in, that, in the, 50, the, 50, the 50 minutes, the five different tries that they scored. Um, the variety, whether it be their click attack and being able to get off turnover ball, grubbers and Mahara from, um, from Farrell or even, uh, you know, the strike off for the for the first try as well. The ability that they had at different times being able to score different points in different ways was really a good thing that I was um, really impressed with because, um, you know, Physically, and the kind of line out more, and the physicality around the breakdown is really important. But you know, the click attack and the ability to be able to score tries in different ways was really um, was really positive. And I think they're going to need that against the All Blacks. Those moments of being able to um, score points in different ways. We know that the physical battle is going to be huge. And any time they've had success against the All Blacks, it's been able to win that breakdown battle and been able to slow down our ball. But it was really pleasing. It was real positive to see them score tries in different ways especially in the first 50 minutes of that game against the Japanese. Mm. The All Blacks did something similar, I suppose. The, the kicking game that you talk about, the attacking kicking game, the variety they showed certainly in the first 20 and the last 20 minutes was great. <coughs> they, they started well, they finished well. All of the things that they've been criticised over the years for doing, they did right. And so going in against England, with that kind of variety, the direct play, it sets it up quite nicely to see how this style will make a fight. It does, and it, in the sense that I think they're a lot um, harder to defend now that they've got that balance of their attack right in terms of what kicks they use, um, what, when they chance their arm, where they chance their arm. Um, so it, it's much of a challenge for the, the opposition as it is for, for us to get right. But, um, you know, I think that the, the moving of Geordie to 12 is, has been a key difference. I think Davy Havili probably started it. Um, and then by chance, through injury, Geordie got promoted up there and he, he executed his role really well. Um, so he'll probably come into that 12. He sort of slipped in there um, mm. against Scotland as well and he was part of that attacking kick. But it just means it's not um, one-dimensional when you're trying to exit. Um, and, and then with Bodie at the back, uh, I don't know, it just seems like a really good balance. Um, yeah, I think it had started well with Davey, like you said, Jip, in the early part of the season. But then just by chance, um, you know, when Geordie's been given that opportunity and what he's shown, and I think... What's important against an English team is you'd be able to have the physicality, um, being able to get over the contact area, which he can do. He's got a great defensive game. He's very brave and abrasive and he's really dominant in his, in his shot selection, which is great. But then the kicking game, I think, is going to be the most important thing. And he has that he has that ability to be able to do that, whether that be kicking long, crossfield kicks, um, or grubbers in behind, or even little chips that we've seen from Davey as well. Um, Jordy's got all those skills to be able to do it. So I just think with base how he's gone the last couple of weeks, your currency is your form and, and when you have it. I think Jordy at the moment at 12, um, he's got that bit of form behind him and I think he'll be, him and Rico will, will finish off the year in that midfield pairing. So would there be any other changes to what we've seen as I suppose over the last month, the top All Blacks team, Bryn, do you see anything changing? Probably the biggest one, we'll see who will start at hooker. I think the, the battle that Tokiaho and, um, and Taylor are having, um, they're both one and one, they're, you know, there's no one two punch, I think it's a one one with those two, so whether the selection that goes with that um, and then maybe um, you know, who else would there be? You're bringing in the props as well, the young props of um, Lomax and, um, and DeGroote to start again. So um, that would probably be the only difference. I think you've got Frizzell who probably comes back at six 
Um, even though Akira actually had a really sure. good game. I'm not sure about uh, that. <laughs> the, the, the president of the Akira well, Yuani fan club has got something to say. I think Frizzell. <laughs> no, I think Frizzell. No, just hear me out. You've, you've made assumptions that are incorrect. <laughs> um, I think with Brody coming back, Scott Barrett may slip to six. Oh, right. I didn't see that coming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yep. I don't know. Like, I think a big body, the way the style England play, um, and also the pressure they put at line out time, having those three big men. Mm. On there, and, and um, you know, Akira or, or Shannon coming off the bench to to bring it home. He pulled down that Stuart Hogg just meters out. He had no right yeah. to get to that. <laughs> He's just in yeah. some form. Um, you know, we, we've talked a lot about probably a hell of a lot of other players, but in terms of looking at the year, you know, Artie's obviously the front runner to win Player of the Year, but. In terms of Scott Barrett and what he's offered, he is right up there with a nomination, if not pushing for it. Mm, mm. And then Mark Talia on the right wing? don't know. I th- I'd love to see it, but you know, Sevo hasn't done anything wrong to play himself out of a position either. Um, so you'd, well, you'd have yeah. to think they'll, they'll keep Sevo there. But I would love to see, just to get a, a better assessment, a, a more fuller assessment of one versus other. Mm. They're very like for like. You know, like Sevu beats players one on one, defensively puts good pressure on, he's good under the high ball, works hard. So, I mean, you're not going to lose anything either way you go. Um, I, I'm probably just being selfish because, um, you know, I'd love to see Mark play. <laughs> it would be a bold call, Bryn, seeing as one was in the main squad and one wasn't. You know, yeah. when you, if you pick someone in the main squad and you go to the big test match, surely you've got to show the loyalty to the person who was picked in the main yeah. squad. And Sevu's played well. And it's put, you know, I guess question marks around if you, you know, you could start Mark because he has played well. And so your currency is only the way that you're playing. And so he had a great debut. But I think what Sever does have on his, on his side is the experience. And they'll know what they can get in those kind of moments with Sever and playing, you know, in those kind of test matches. But again, um, you know, Mark played well. And so no different from any other position. We talk about the hooking roles or even the seven with Sam Kane and Papali when Sam was around, you know, form. There's always going to be able to question uh, whether you're going to be in the team. What Mark's done, Done no harm in the selection um, to be able to play at 14 or even as a 23 role coming off the bench as well. Just don't know if he can fit that role with Rico at centre. If Rico's at centre, he can cover wings, so you're better off kick, you know, having an Anton Leonard Brown in terms of the mix. Mm. I think it's a, he either starts or he's not in the 23. Just thinking of the difference between Severis and Mark Talia, and I haven't seen their standing 40s, my main difference is I would think that Mark Talia's got better top end speed. You're asking the wrong bloke. I, that's kind of, that, I'm just trying to find the difference there. I, you know, it feels know like maybe I, it oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I know that Seve is very fast over his first 10, 10, 15 metres. But, um, you know, Mark, when he gets into full gear, he goes, um, he's pretty quick. Yeah, I'd have to, um, I'll give them a call, Ross, and I'll let you know next week. <laughs> I've both of them. So I'll let you know he's quick. He's got a first 10 and a first 40. So I'll let you know next week. How about this? Live on the show next week, they run off. For a spot on the All Blacks right wing, we can make this a new reality TV program right here on Aotearoa Rugby. Get some views. Yeah, it would be massive. The hooker role. You you mentioned before that they're both number one. Now, I suppose there was probably a feeling a few weeks ago that you know maybe Takiaho brings more off the bench, but I think we saw on the weekend that that's not necessarily the case. So how do you make that call? Well, I think right now, I mean, if we go off the last test. Having Cody's experience out there was a big part of us winning. Mm. I think Cody and TJ Pedernara's experience, calm mindset, having been there before, knowing um, what strings to pull, um, even conversations with the ref, you know, changing um, the shape of those discussions and, and where he saw things before they came on, um, is, you know, as unfair as it is, sometimes you know, the bench role is more just as important, if not more important, to bring things home so maybe the the, the match up in styles because it was great to see Cody running and, mm. and that live wire attack that we know he's good at and that is probably better placed off the bench and, and Takiaho is physical direct and he's he's a great um, player to suck the, the gas out of them to for then Cody to take advantage of later in the game but I mean that's off you know like even that test match that Cody started against the Wallabies um, against Wales uh, it's just horses for courses, it's, uh, but that, I think that experience thing um, was a big difference, him and, him and TJ against Scotland, so 
that that sort of sways me towards a, a Takiaho start. I'm going the other way. Oy. Yeah, I'm going the other way. I think the experience and I think bringing the likes of what a Takiaho can do and his skill set in that last 30 minutes, when, well, you know, 30, 30 or 25 minutes, I think it could be really important in the back end of that game. So, yeah, I'm probably going to, I'm yeah, I think I'm going to go with Cody just for the experience. I guess his form that he's had, a little bit of his form that he's had um, in the last couple of test matches. But that's not to say that Takiaho hasn't played well. It's just that, like you said, there's just so much great depth around those two and whoever starts and whoever comes off the bench, um, you know, you're not going to be like, oh, that's a selection um, dilemma. Um, but, yeah, I think I'll just go the opposite for Cody's experience and, and big All right, well, we'll finish the Talaia versus uh, Sibir Reese race and then we'll have a throw-off <laughs> who starts at hooker. Um, well, they're both fairly yeah. accurate at the moment. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't miss it this week on our Delta <laughs> Rugby Pod. We'll have a chat with NZR. Great. Okay, let's get into our predictions for the weekend. 